for like crazy redheadedness, like a lots of pent up energy having been trapped in my house for six months. I've taken multiple self defense classes and my kid's in karate, like and he's a beast, so I've kinda had some practice uh, here. She's the ultimate right. don't fuck with me, bro. I'm not having a hundred percent. I think she could take fifty. The fifty the fifty one would kill her though. Yeah. Fifty first ten year old. <laughs> but uh you did pretty well there and answer the internet. And we actually are at forty minutes, so that you know what that means, Chris. There's an automated ad coming right now that pays us 14 cents every time someone listens. So thank you, Spreaker. But that does lead us to our next question. So our next question is the Stone d'Appetit question of the week. And it's actually the question we ask every single week. And let's say you uh, overconsumed, you know, drank too much with the, uh, the significant other, and you all are headed home. You go in the refrigerator. What is the guilty pleasure late night snack you may eat right before bed or even in bed if you're a glutton? So I like obsessed with food. You go freezer and or if you come in freezer or everywhere. Yeah. No, my I don't, you're I don't out. mess with the freezer. I'm not I don't do bullshit Freshies food. Freshies only. 100. Hey, percent I will guarantee you. You could call my boyfriend right now and ask him this question and ask him like, what would I make him? And he will tell you like, I would literally make a bacon sandwich, fried egg, beautiful brioche bread. I'm like a hoarder of food. If you open my refrigerator, it's unbelievably full of. Whatever, and we're gonna go to town and make something really good. Like maybe probably make make some garlic aioli if I'm feeling like you know, let's get this crazy. Is late night guilty. One hundred percent. I promise you, I have like my own food Instagram to so keep if you're track like of stuff I make. Drunk, you're like I'm still making that egg sammy. One hundred percent. It's like borderline going to like a late night drive through. No, hungry. I will one hundred percent like make something super awesome. You don't even have any goldfish. I have goldfish because I have a six-year-old. Okay. I'll tell you what it oh, is. Oh, she says okay. she doesn't know any cartoon characters. No, 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 she has a six-year-old. Sorry. I thought the kid was like 16 and like Cobra Kai when she said he was a badass. By the way, did you see the Cobra Kai? It's really Chris good. I'm watching it. We're, we have to rewatch the movie. Some it's folks really seen good. It it's it really good. good. Um, that and Yellowstone. I'm like all Yellowstone. About Yellowstone. What's oh, up? Well, like, I haven't watched the latest season. Don't talk about it. I won't. But that chick, Beth Dutton, is like my spirit animal. Yeah, is it because she's redheaded? Yeah, that. I mean, your redheads, like when you have redheads out there, you're like, you know, there's not that many of us. We're going extinct. Really? Yeah, when you get famous, if you're a famous redhead, it's like really hard. Well, congrats. Yeah. You but I it. will tell you what's in my freezer is tater tots. I thought she was going to say because, human head. <laughs> no, because my boyfriend loves to make me at the fire station. He makes like this like tater tot casserole that I like used to be super judgy about. It's but fucking delicious. it's actually delicious. pretty amazing. Where's we, your boyfriend from, the Midwest? He No, he's from <laughs> Phoenix. Uh, <laughs> we're going to give a shout out to our casserole country listeners. <laughs> that is such, a, that is such a, a thing they do, too. They're like, Thanksgiving, tater, tater tot tots casserole. shoved with chives and cheese. Yeah, and it, it, that's Little what cream it is. mushroom. It <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I was like, that is so foul. And then you eat it, and actually is pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's I have to, that's the sad thing it, about it. It's, it would end up on It's like my so bruschetta board. 100%. You eat that fried chicken with that crumpled skin on side like this shit slaps we had a mac and cheese off and i was like i'm gonna blow you out of the water with this thing like you now know, that making I know the bechamel talking. all the things and he makes this mac and cheese with velveta like that stuff that's like actually plastic and it was like le- he legit beat me thank you so much better sometimes <laughs> just the unhealthy version is the best version i mean i will say like david chang who i love is um he'll tell you like the best cheese for um, a cheeseburger is american cheese I mean, our friends, we've had the folks on from 11 Madison Park. Oh, my God, they're the best. And Rich was saying, like, or Kevin was saying, they cooked for the guy that started Popeye's, the founder, and they were like, I ha- his is the best fried chicken I've ever had in my life. I have to try fried chicken. I have to see if he will approve of my fried chicken. Like, it's sometimes just the worst is actually the best. Yeah, it's a fair point. So, yeah, there are frozen tots in my freezer. Fuck yeah. There's a lot of, she like. She said she didn't use her freezer. Liar. No, I put like stuff. It's we not expose tr- people on this podcast. I'm totally gonna go home and show you. Like, I'm gonna send you a video of my freezer. It's like pie filling that I made that I had extra. It's like of, a human like hand right there in the corner. <laughs> Protein. Yeah. <Come> on. Uh, <laughs> Protein. Uh, Kip, Kip just got an air fryer, so we've been throwing. What do you think tots. about that? Um, so it's actually a seven-in-one Ninja Foodie. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and give credit where credit is due. It's a little bit. Uh, it does everything. So I still don't know exactly what I'm doing, but we air fry the shit out of every potato <laughs> that you can get at Whole Foods. Every really? single one. And occasionally one from Marcy's. And I just Market. made this. Um, you guys should try this. It's a Japanese sweet potato. Have you had those? They're purple on the Let's outside. Let's go ahead and talk to him. And what you do with it is I made it last week, and it's like one of the best things I've made all year. Take miso, white miso, whip it with butter, 
Put that inside it. Like, I smoked it on my tray, too, but it's too much of a pain, man. I, like, want to put that thing and go. Like, I'm a cheater and I'm proud of it. I've got a we have a gas as well. The Traeger's the bomb. It's like I'm a huge fan. Anyway. No free ads. Damn it. I smoked the Japanese sweet potatoes in there and then put the miso butter, whip it with sour cream, creme brulee the top with like black Japanese sugar and Parmesan. Blew my mind. It I'll show you a tasty. picture of it. Yeah. It was good. And she's like, yeah, I do this when I'm blackout drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you don't just have gray air hanging out next to your Traeger uh, yeah. for the, the offshoots? Well, um, we do appreciate you joining us today, Lauren. Um, we want to say thank you to Nicole and the team. Thank you all for setting this up. For our listeners at home, before we get into the hardest-hitting question of the night, we want to remind you all, where can everyone find locations, menus, happy hours, how to find you all on social media? Do you know all of that stuff? Yeah, I do. Well, would you mind telling at our Postino listeners about Postino Wine Cafe is our uh, I forgot it. Instagram, so Facebook. My personal one is at Lauren Bailey LB on, on the Insta. That's and cool. Upward Projects. At Upward Projects is our parent company, so it has all the concepts you can check out. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then uh, for a reminder, Mondays and Tuesdays, they do $25 board and bottle. As you saw on our Instagram, it's four, It's a huge spread of bread, and it's great takeout. If you actually check out some of our friends' posts, if you follow us, you probably follow them. They've shown you they, they, the takeout is creative enough. It won't You won't lose the integrity of the snack. So don't be shy to order takeout if you don't want to come in. The deals still apply. And for those that do like to come in, don't forget they have wine by the glass, five before five. So if you're looking for a place to work remotely or if you're perhaps one of the early risers, early offers, then you can get up here at three or four and tee off, get drunk, and pass out before seven. You know what I'm saying? There you go. There we go. Chris, go ahead. Do the honors. Lead us into the the promise. this might make you cry. Oh, this God. Like She's segment. a crier. She's like Billy Bob. <laughs> I'm ready to do it. I'm I all about it. I took the Last Supper. No friends or family. can be three people, living or dead. Who are they, and what are we eating? Okay, I'm going to go with um, Albert Einstein. Nerd alert. I am a nerd. Like, if I showed you pictures of myself in high school, you would be, like, shocked. I had, like, a headgear. Like, how come no one has headgear anymore? What happened to that? Like, why were we the only generation that was tortured? That was a bad scientific experiment, and they shut it down. also went out because things just... Society progressed. But I think Albert Einstein is brilliant beyond belief and has, like, even so many things that are still relevant today. But, yes, I am a big nerd, so... I love Albert right. Einstein. Number two. Number two is Sarah Blakesley. You guys don't know who that is, I betcha, do you? A lot Anyone? of our listeners don't either, Anyone? so go ahead and do okay. that. We'll have our she intern fact check. is the founder of Spanx, which is like the modern-day lady girdle. Now you might I be know what Spanx about. are. Oh, yeah, I, the that, fact that you know who the founder is, she's like revolutionary. She's a I, fucking badass. I love it. I, love I, w- it. I would imagine a, a lot answer. of women know who the founder of Spanx is. She no? is a baller. I thought that was like a lifesaver. Like, I thought that transformed the game. No, she oh. is a baller. Like, literally, if you think about it, she took. Is she still alive? Yeah, she's a, she's I like know. she's one of the youngest female founder billionaires. Making can, lady girdles. That's righteous. Her and Oprah probably. No, I feel like, like there's two. probably another show where you tell us how you know all about Spanx because I think I'm like I'm mystified by like how what happens with dudes when they like learn about Spanx for the first time. You no, know? I mean I'm not gonna insert myself into a conversation I have no space in. So, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so okay. I won't sit here and pretend to know anything but about it. <laughs> she was totally self-made, awesome lady entrepreneur, like amazing leader. Just super innovative. She's. Have you met her before? No, and I would love to meet her. And she's just an inspiration. Where does she live? She I lives. can send her a handwritten note. That usually gets through. Really? It she's does. It's a listener. lot more personal than it used to be. I would love that if you could do that. And it's awesome. in cursive. I have great penmanship. You write in cursive? Yeah, I'm not See? that young. This is another generational thing that, like, if you were taught cursive, you I, know. I write casually. Like, if I'm handwriting, like, when I have to write, edit out that joke I made about Luke Woodham at 49 minutes. That's usually casually written in cursive instead of anything else. Is that part of your southern gentlemanness, like cursive writing? I think it's just ease, because you can kind of get away with R's and S's being sloppy. And I don't know if you know this, but I'm not really that put together today. <laughs> and so that's kind of how life goes. Do you write your girlfriend love notes in cursive? I send her nice messages, but that's not not in cursive. <laughs> I try to get her edible arrangements, and she is not about those. Those are terrible. Why not? They're Why terrible. Why does nobody like edible arrangements? It's like, look at the head-shaking no. I know. Like, might She's as well like, buy a bus She's like, if you give me banks. one, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> 
I, she, I was like, why? I didn't know that she had this animosity about. She was like, no, don't you ever do it. I was like, what? Do you hate fruit? And so now I just no, want to get one like, out of spite. Why, why are they so irritating? I don't know. Everybody hates them though. So now I just want to start. But how are they're like a huge company? So some people no must clue. like them. And you order online, so I'm sure they come like wilted and shit. I have no clue. I've never gotten to give the gift of edible arrangements. I, I feel like I'm going to send you one. I'm about to send you one. Okay. Thanks well, for having me. I'm going to send you a monthly <laughs> one. Uh, well, I'm going to send you a thank you card for letting me drink your wine today. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's two good ones. Okay. Um, the third one. The third one is Danny Meyer because he is an amazing restaurateur. And why? I mean, I've been able to meet him a couple times, and he's incredible. But he are legit- you going to make him cook, or is he able to enjoy? He's the an awesome with cook you? too. But um, he is le- legitimized our business in a way that it never used to be a, um, an actual career that you could have. People always felt bad about like, oh, I'm going to get a real job. Or he made. He put so much integrity into our industry that um, I remember reading his book, and I was like 21, I think. It's called Setting the Table. It's about hospitality for other people. And just, and I remember reading the last page and literally, like, Crying. getting teary-eyed. Because it made you feel like what I'm doing is, like, so legit, you yeah, know? And it it's is. so special. And it is. That what is I had this moment of, like, connecting the dots around, like, you know, you think about, and those of us who've worked in restaurants, like, it can be kind of a drag. It's hard. It's long hours. But we get this, like, beautiful privilege to create tables for people to connect and go on their first dates and, like, you know, um, make big decisions in their lives. They're going to take a job, buy a house, whatever it may be. And, like, we get to provide that platform. And um, Do you I, remember y'all's first date? You who? and your significant other? Kevin, yeah. I don't know Kevin, so I'm just going to call him your SO. Was it at a Postino? No, it was like right before COVID happened. He came over to my house. And really? He cooked. Oh. And that was, I was like, oh, he likes to cook. Like, this is awesome. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Danny Meyer is like the bomb. Like, just yeah. a huge, huge beacon in our industry. And even like with this whole pandemic and like leading the charge for support for restaurants. Um, doing really innovative things too he really started this revolutionary practice of including tips into um the prices of stuff it's had a little bit of a rocky start but the guy is someone who has intention about his whole philosophy is taking care of employees first and and then vendors and then guests in that order and he puts his money where his mouth is and does that through and through and he gave me the courage to build our company like with that same philosophy in mind I'm back. That's what, and you know the hype on the top, the tip thing. That's like the universally well, like that's the play. Everyone else uses the metric system and tips included, and we're over here with our thumb in our ass doing the exact opposite. Yeah. So he's trying to lead the well, and the then needed you, charge. Yeah, and the disparity between front of house and the culinary side is is really big, and um, it's really unfortunate. I'm trying to close the gap with that, and yeah. because he's such a leader in the space, like it's it's really incredible what he's done. Um, so that would be, those would be my three. Off the top of my head. All right, what are we? What are we eating for dinner? My mom Chris. would be cooking because. No, she's, oh yeah, that counts. You didn't say that. I didn't. I didn't think we would put our family to work. Well, no, but, but she, okay, so I can't talk, talk, to, talk to her. But she has to make the food because she my mom's no food. words. No words. She just stays in the kitchen. You guys have southern mama, so you know, like when your mom makes the food, there's like I don't know what she puts in it, or what she does to it, but I mean I've eaten in some of the best restaurants in the world, and there's nothing that holds a candle to her fried okra, fried pork chops, fried corn. Cornbread in the in the cast iron skillet, made Man. with love. I think it's a lot of butter and dairy. I know the oh, way it should be. I just started thinking of my mom's blackened catfish in the cast iron when cast you said iron. that, and it just every time I try to recreate it. I mean, catfish is a shitty fish that we used to eat all the time, but something about hers, it just it hits different. And you're right. Yeah. So as long as mom doesn't talk, I think she just made a pretty dank ass meal. <laughs> yeah. That was my cheater way of having my mom at the dinner. That's very nice of you. My mom's <laughs> probably going to be offended that I haven't found a way to sneak her into the conversation. So, hey, Mom. <laughs> um, well, Lauren, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you again for having us and hosting us today. You guys are the best. It's a pleasure. Yes, well, the pleasure was all ours. So thank you again for joining us. Chris, you want to work on a new uh, sign-off right here? Uh, yeah, but before that, like, get on down to the patio. This place is great. That's like, we've got a sure. shit ton of room back here, and it's awesome. That is true. Like I said earlier, you can't touch anybody. You can't spit on anybody. It's we safe we're into distance. the parking lot on the side. And then there's occasional, you get a little festive fair for the ladies that want to watch the firemen drive by. They'll even toot their yeah, horn you never, you. you could find your future husband. It could happen. Well, yeah, you never Wait, know. I want to ask you guys some questions about each other really quick. Oh, you ready to do this? Let's go. I mean, I okay, let's see how accurate. You guys have been telling that. me how 
well, you know each other, my roommate. That's let's see how yeah, actually, really. You said, you said, let's see how really.